a Concord student service where we transform students to transform the culture. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us on today. We want to invite you back to worship with us every Sunday except third Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Also, come out for Rec Wednesdays. We're here every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. with food, fun, fellowship, and faith building. So we'd love to see your face in the place. Stay connected with us. Follow us on Instagram at Concord Dallas Students. You can always double check the YouTube links at Concord Dallas Students 1305. We love you. God loves you even more. Let's get into service. Now, I'll be reading the scripture, so if you guys could stand and read it with me. I'm reading Matthew 25, verse 42 through 45. Is it going to be on the screen? Is it? There we go. If I could read it with me. All right. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in a prison, and you did not look after me. They also would answer, Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick in prison, and do not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you do not do for me, or the least, you do not do for me. All right, and now I'll be praying for you guys, so if you could bow your heads. Thank you, Jesus, for waking us up praying. Thank you for letting us see another morning that we know wasn't promised. I want to pray for a blessed rest of the week, and I just want to watch over for everyone testing this week. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now the praise team. Good morning. Y'all awake? 9 a.m. wasn't awake, and y'all don't look awake either. Can y'all stand up, please? Y'all ready to worship? Hello? Y'all ready to worship? Can y'all come up here to the front? Come on. Come to the front for worship. Don't be scared. I'll wait. I'll wait. Come on, this corner, y'all too cool. Okay. Worship is a very intimate thing, so it only makes sense to worship together and feel all, like we're on one accord, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. Y'all clap it up. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. I am not forgotten, I am not forgotten, I am not forgotten, God knows my name, he knows my name, hey. Y'all sing that with me. 
us. He will never leave us. Our names are written 
on the palm of his hand. He loves us so much, and he's never lost a battle. Amen? And he never will lose a battle. Um, he is our faithful father. He is forever with us every day of our lives, so we never have to feel alone. We never have to feel lonely. Even when nobody else is there, God is there with us. Right in the midst of the storm, right in the midst of the chaos, God is with us. Amen. Oh, he's my faithful father, and he's my friend, yeah. He is my faithful father, calling me out of the dark, and I cannot whisper away what he said in the light, and he is my firm foundation, my anchor won't be moved, storms may collide, but my soul is on fire with his word. Yeah, so when listen to the sound of power on my lips, Jesus has broken the curse, he has never lost a battle, and who are you, great mountain, that you should not bow low? Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And he never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. Sing, he is my faithful father. Never lost a battle, sing our great defense. 
Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. He's 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 never lost a battle. And I'll never lose a battle. And I'll never lose a battle. He's never lost a battle. Lord, we thank you that you are the King of glory. That you sit high and you look low. That you'll never leave us. And you'll never forsake us. He's always with you. And I'll never leave you. He loves you with every ounce of his being. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. Lord, we just want to be with you. Yeah, King. just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. So yes, the world, yes, the world. will bow down and say, bow down and say you are God. And every man, every man will bow down and say, bow down and say you are King. So let's start right you feel this place? 
We just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Hold on, praise team. Stay right there, praise team. Stay right there. Do that one more time. Do that one more time. King of glory, fill this See, sometimes place. you find yourselves in a situation where you really need God to come through for you. Sometimes we find ourselves in the midst of something where the pressure is so much. All you can really do is hope and pray that God is there. But this is an opportune time for everybody right where you are to ask God, just come right here, feel this place. Do me a favor, just close your eyes. Trust me, close your eyes. Hear those words. Come on, open your mouth. Say it. Tell me, feel this place. And this place is, it's, it's what's it within. It's your heart. It's your soul. It's your spirit. You're saying, God, feel this place. Come on, don't worry about who's to your right or to your left. Don't worry about who's looking at you. God's looking at you. 
Just close your eyes. Lift your hands. If you're bold enough, just lift your hands real quick. Say, God, fill this place. God, fill this place. God, fill my heart. God, I need your presence. God, I need your spirit. God, I want to feel your love. Right here, right now. We don't have to wait till the end of the service. He wants to show up right now. So God, right now where we are, see our hearts. See the intentions of our hearts. And we ask you just to come right now into our hearts with your spirit, with your love, with your peace, with your joy, with your fellowship. As we prepare to dive into your word, God, open our hearts, open our ears, open us up that we may receive. No matter what happened before today, no matter where we were before today, no matter what we were doing or thinking five minutes ago, Father God, right now, open us up that we may receive your word. I pray for every individual here, Lord God. You said we are the sheep of your pasture. You said my people know my voice and another they will not follow. You said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. You said, I rejoice over you with singing. The work says, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. If you believe that prayer, if you believe that God is the King of glory, if you believe that he is your Lord and Savior, as you go back to your seats, would you just clap your hands? Would you just clap your hands as you go back to your seats and say, thank you, God. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for the praise team, for the worship team, for the worship ministry. Give a hand to yourselves. Amen. Uh, let's see, what time is it? Yep. Good morning. Good morning. One more time. Good morning. Come on, say it like you love me. Good morning. We don't know you. Oh, well, if you don't know me, my name is Donnie. Uh, you can call me Donnie, or you can call me Donnie, or you can call me DB, or you can call me Donnie, or the other one. Um, I am going to be with you for the next five hours today. Uh, we're going to go intently through the Word of God for the next five hours. Are you ready? Who's ready? Show of hands. Five hours. Oh, that's, I'm not serious. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about a subject uh, can I walk the floor? Is that okay? Or is that weird? If it's okay. If it's weird. Um, if you're a freshman, clap your hands if you're a freshman. Okay. If you're in middle school, collectively clap your hands. Strength in numbers. See that? Strength in numbers. If you're a sophomore in high school, clap your hands. That's right. It's, it's almost your year. It's almost your year. If you're a senior in high school, clap your hands. Okay, that's all. If you're a junior in high school, make some noise. Juniors, it's your year next year. You got to get ready. Make some noise. You're a junior. I love it. All right, true story. In 1999, look at the person next to you, say 1999. Who was alive and breathing in 1999? I'm trying to see how old I am. Right? Nobody. Who was not born, not born in 1999? Okay, Jesus Christ, help me, God. Okay. In 1999, I was a junior in high school. <laughs> she said, dang. 
I was a junior in high school in 1999, and it was a really good year for me. Um, I was doing okay in school. Um, I was on the basketball team. Um, I was dating this girl. Kim, close your ears. I was dating this girl that I really liked, and we had a pretty decent relationship. It was cool. Um, and everything was going great. 1999, my junior year in high school, so much fun. But it was also the year of the Columbine High School massacre, school shooting. Happened in Aurora, Colorado. And before that time, I know it's like, like you hear about it all the time, it's like, wow, another school shooting. But in 1999, it was so rare and unheard of, it was shocking that two boys were going to their schools with handguns, machine guns, and pipe bombs and shoot and kill one teacher and 12 students. It just shocked us. It was devastating. Never heard of such a thing happening. 1999, junior year in high school. And out of the 12 students who were killed, there were two girls who we started hearing about. One was named Cassie, the other girl was named Rachel. These two girls were, um, had recently given their lives to the Lord. They were Christians, they were born again believers. And as the story goes, at different points of this tragic event, one of the shooters went up to one of the girls and asked one of them something like, do you still believe in God? He said, yes. And he shot and killed her. Somewhere in that timeline, someone, as it goes, someone went to the other girl and asked her or said to her, if you deny your Christianity, your belief in Jesus, I'll let you live. And then she didn't do it, and he killed her. This was the story that we heard about these two young ladies. And it got me thinking, if that was me, if I was in the face of danger, if I was dealing with that type of pressure, and somebody asked me, do this and, I, and live, or do that and die, what would I do? And today, we kind of want to deal with that type of event from Scripture, right? And I think some of us know this story. There's, there's three boys, three Hebrew boys. Their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? These three Hebrew boys, somewhere around the ages of 13 and 20 years old, was faced with this same situation where um, do this and live or do that and die. As the story goes, King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, built this statue, this figure, this idol. It's as tall as the Reunion Tower in downtown Dallas so that no matter where you are in the province, you can see it like the Reunion Tower. And the story goes, there was a law that was set forth that says, at this time, on this particular day, when you hear these particular musical instruments playing, no matter what you are doing, stop and worship. The Reunion Tower, let's just say it's the Reunion Tower. 12 o'clock on Wednesday, no matter where you are, when the beat drops, wherever you are, school, college, work, when you hear it on Wednesday at noon, wherever you are standing, turn wherever the reunion tower is and bow down and worship the reunion tower. That's the law. If you don't do it, you're going to die. Point blank, period. If you don't do it, you're going to die. So that was the issue. That's the setup. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as we know, they didn't do it. They're like, no, nah, we're not going to do that. Word got out. They went back to the king. These guys are defying your law. They're breaking the law. He calls them forward and says, hey, you know what the law is. You know what it says. You know what it is. You know the consequence. If you don't do it, you die. And this is where we pick up our story, okay? So it's, it's from Daniel, the third chapter, um, verse 15. Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. Who got your phone? Who taking notes? Y'all taking notes? Here it is. He says, now, this is, their, this is their last chance. This is it. 
This ain't like, you know, for play play, like when you, you get in trouble and your mom or dad or, or nana or whoever is like, I'm going to give you one more chance. But you know they lying. You're going to get a thousand. Here it is. Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the blah, the blah, the blah, all these instruments, he says, I'm going to give you one more chance to bow down and worship this statue I have made. So when you hear the sound of these musical instruments, you know what you need to do. You know what time it is. He says, but if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately. Say immediately. How do you say that in Spanish? Uh, immediately. One more time. Immediately. You will be thrown immediately, pronto, into the fire, into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to save you from my power. I know you worship God. I know you worship Yahweh, Jehovah. But listen, when I throw you into this blazing furnace, who's going to be able to save you? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebi, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But, say but. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set up. Now, I have been there before. I've been in a situation where it was pressurized, where I had to make a decision. Like, I was, it wasn't, like, I wasn't going to die. It was, but it was pressurized. It was a situation where it was like, are you going to do this? Or are you going to do that? And there were consequences to it, right? I've been there. Do I take a stand for Christ or do I fold? Do I stand and say, no, I'm not going to do this over here because that's not Christ-like. That's not who I am. I need to represent Christ better. Or do I come on this side and do I fold and just give in and do it? Because it's, it's pressure. And pressure is real. Am I right? Right. Because pressure busts what? Thank you. Pressure busts pipes. And pressure is real. And peer pressure is really real. Mm-hmm. So, so, let me ask you. So, when you're faced with it, what do you do? When you're faced with pressure, when you're faced with certain decisions that may be hard on you, you don't really know what to do. What do you do? How do you stand? And that's what I want to talk about. Um, but before we go there, let's just do this. I want to talk to you about the strategy of the enemy. Who knows the strategy of the devil? Who knows how the devil gets down? Who knows the tactics that he uses? It's right here. I'm going to tell you. This is what he does. Number one. Number one. If you're taking notes, write this down. Number one. This is the strategy of the enemy. Satan's first attack strategy is to get you to become afraid. His first attack strategy is to get you to become afraid. It's the oldest trick in the book. I'm just going to use fear. I'm going to use intimidation. I'm going to threaten you. I'm going to make it sound good. Because when you use fear, whatever the fear tactic is, the image becomes real in your mind. Even if it's not real. You ever been to a haunted house? A haunted mansion? You're smart. Don't do it. You ever been to a haunted? Anybody show you a haunted house? They, they got one in Fort Worth. Y'all been in a haunted house? And you went to the haunted house. Were you terrified? Like people just popping out of everywhere? You just, ah! But you know when you go into the haunted house, you know that you, what to expect. You know there's somebody there dressed up. They're going to scare you. But for some reason, when you go in there and they scare you, what happens? You're afraid. You scream. Get me out of here. Run. Go, 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 go. You know. That's what he does. Because the language of the furnace is meant to invoke fear. If you don't do this, you're going to be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. That's a fear tactic. That's what the enemy does. So for you, that may be something, let's say you're students, right? Um, whether you're at middle school or high school or even going into college, this is a, this right here, what I'm about to tell you, this whole idea of creation versus evolution, right? Genesis, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth versus man was a lizard fish who climbed up out of the water and we started breathing air and then we became... Um, a monkey and then a dinosaur and then a pterodactyl and then a ladybug and then from that we spiraled up and became man that whole idea that's a real thing in school for some educators 
they hate the idea of you talking and believing in creation or a God, and they put the pressure on you, especially in college. I've seen it. I've seen it where if you don't deny this whole idea of creationism and accept evolution, then I'm going to fail you. I'm going to fail. You're going to fail my class. I've had a student come to me and show me in red ink, her teacher wrote, I don't like this idea. You need to change your theory. If not, you're going to fail my class. And who's going to be able to save you from my power? I mean, it's just a paper. I mean, I still believe in Jesus. I still believe in creation, but it's just a paper. What do you do? Right? But the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and Love and a, not one more time. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and one more time, louder. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of, uh-huh, and a, boom, that's how you do it. First attack of the strategy, the first attack strategy of the enemy is to get you to become afraid, but God has not given you a spirit of fear. Let's move faster. Satan wants you to believe that God has abandoned you and that your enemy is more powerful than God. God don't love you. If God loves you, what do you let you go through what you're going through? God is not here. He said he's going to be with you always, but you've been praying and praying and praying, but where is he? He's not real. There are some people who will get you to believe that the idea of God and going to church and Jesus as a son of God is the most ridiculous, the most antiquated, the most ancient idea I say, come on, man, we, we, we're advanced beings. We have AI now. That is such an old way of thinking. That is so prehistoric. God? Come on, for real? So he wants you to believe that God has abandoned you and that your enemy is more powerful than God, and even that God doesn't exist. The enemy is great at making you lose focus on what the truth is. But the Bible says, so be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And again, God says, for I alone am God. I am God and there is none like me. Here's my last point before I really go into it. Here's the third strategy of the enemy. Oh, that's not the third strategy. But here is what God wants. God is looking for the bold and the brave. Who's bold in here? Show of hands. Who's brave in here? Who's strong in here? Who's fearless in here? It's not a lot, but it's enough. Because mm -hmm. I know that this is, you know, this is the South. Of course, God is looking for the bold and the brave. I know we're in the South. I know this is the Bible Belt. I know this is Texas. I know everybody here is a Christian, right? Hands again, one more time. All right. Everybody you know is a Christian. Everybody you know goes to church. But how often do we take a hard line stance for Christ, for righteousness, for holiness? What about when you're challenged with making decisions about drugs, alcohol, sex before marriage, sex outside of marriage, confronting a friend who you know is living in sin? What about those things? When do we take a hard line stance outside of just saying, I went to church Sunday, or I believe in Jesus, or I have a Bible in the back seat? of my car, when do we take a hard line stance and become a movement for God? John says this, he says, I have written to you who are young and in faith because you are strong. God's word lives in your heart and you have won their battle with the evil one. So, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were bold and they were brave. And when you're bold and you're brave, you say to the flames, bring it on. If you don't do this, then I'm going to throw you in the, furn in the burning furnace. And you say, bring it on. You say, you say, say it again. Bring it on. Bring it on. I'm going to throw you in the front. You're going to get out of my class. If you don't deny Jesus, you got to get out of my class. Bring it on. Thank you. Bring it on. Right? Because, bring it on. Because, 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 who cares? I'm standing for Christ. I'm standing for God. I'm standing for what I believe in. Who cares what you can do to me? 
Who cares how you could? Yeah, okay, you got the power. You can hurt me. Okay, you can kill me. Jesus says, don't be afraid of those who can kill you, but you need to be concerned about the one who can throw your soul into hell. You worried about what somebody going to do to you? You worried about a threat? He says, I have called you because you are young and you are strong and you're bold. Jesus says, listen, when you are arrested, this is what he told his disciples, because he knew they were going to go through persecution. He knew that they would be killed. He knew that they would be set up, tortured, arrested, brought to trial. He says, when you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time, for it is not you who will be speaking. It is the spirit of your father speaking through you. Okay, here we go. So, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are down here. They're looking up at the king. He's saying, all right, if you don't do this, I'm going to throw you into the fire. And they say, we're not going to do it. We know that our God will save us. But even if, say that one more time, even if, a little louder, even if, even if he doesn't. See, that's the part. See, I, I believe you were with me with this. We're going to stand up for righteousness. We're going to stand up against evil. We're going to look evil in the face. You were right there with me. But this is where a lot of people get off the train. Even if he does not rescue me, you're still going to serve him. Because that's the hard part. Think about those two girls I told you about, Cassie and Rachel. They were only juniors in high school. That means they had their entire lives ahead of them. I'm sure they believe at any moment the police is going to come in and we're going to be okay. They probably were telling their friends, you know, as you're hunkering under the table, you're terrified. They're probably saying, it's okay. It's okay. Somebody's coming. We're going to be okay. Just be quiet. Just keep your head down. But then that even if they appeared right in front of them. Even if God doesn't rescue me, even if he doesn't come through for me, even if he doesn't deliver, um, we were talking to our little, our little niece yesterday, and um, a couple weeks ago, she's, a, she's in college, and she um, and her boyfriend and some friends, they went out to, um, on spring break to like Putacana or Dominican or Puerto Rico, somewhere like that, where it's beach and water and just beautiful and um, they were out in the water not too deep because you know black people when we get into the water it's just ankles bottom of the knees right we don't play that game and they were out in the water and a wave came rip current and it took the young man it took him out to sea and when me and Kieran when we got the phone call and the text messages Right. Message was like, such and such got swept away in the water by a wave and they can't find him. They've been searching for him for over an hour. We need y'all to pray. Me and Kim got together and we just started praying. God save him. God rescue him. God do it. You did it before. You're the God of miracles. God, we know you can, you can break through it. God, you can do all things. God, we believe. And we believed and we, and we, and we believed and we believed and we believed. Then we got the phone call. They found him. They found him, y'all. They found him. And then me and Kim got back on the phone call. And we said, God, we thank you. God, we thank you because you are the God who knows all. You're the God who rescued God. You're, you, you, God, we just praise you because you turned a tragic situation into triumph. And then we got another text message about 20 minutes later. He didn't make it. He didn't make it. And we were so stunned because we believed because we prayed because we know God and we said God we know you're going to do it but he didn't make it and for a lot of people right there is where they stop believing right there is where they give up on God because he didn't come through for you the way you wanted him to. It's the even if part that God is looking for from you. Even if you don't rescue me, 
even if you don't come through for me, even if you don't get me out of this situation, God, I'll still. So they said, even if, we won't do it. And they threw him into the fire, tied him up, threw all three of them into the fire. In a blazing furnace, imagine a giant pizza oven. A thousand degrees and more. Threw him into the fire. And the king sat down on his throne. Probably just waited. See what's going to happen to him. Watch how their bodies get consumed with flames and how they fall, will fall down and the fire would just take them and the smoke would come out and their body would just turn into ashes. But it didn't happen. He was looking back and he noticed something. He noticed it. What is that? And he said, hey, come here, come here, come here, come here, dummy. He said, didn't, didn't we throw three men in there tied up? And he said, yeah, 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 three men tied up, threw them into the fire. They're done. It's crispy. He said, but I, I, I see four men in the fire walking around loose and free, and one of them looks like a god. And he called them out, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come out. Are you okay? Servants of the most high God. We know how the story ends. They come out, and they praise God, and he makes a law. He says, there is no one greater than the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You, go, you can't worship nobody but that God because he can save them from the fire. Here's the thing. Here's the point that I want to make. Sometimes it's in the fire where the miracle happens. Sometimes it's right there in the midst of the fire that God wants you to go in. We want God to rescue us before we even get into the situation. But sometimes God wants you to go there because that's where it is. The victory is in the fire. The victory is in the furnace. The victory is where the pressure is. Pressure. Say it, pressure. Pressure. One more time. Louder. Louder. Because let me tell you something. If you was in the fire, you'd be screaming louder than that. There you go. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Pressure. Pressure. Look at your neighbor and say this. This is the last thing. We're going home. Say this to your neighbor. Say it like you really mean it. Say it like you mean it, all right? In the fire is where your safety is. One more time. In the fire is where your safety is. Did they like they meant it? I, one more time. In the fire is where your safety is. Here's this. Say this. Sometimes God doesn't rescue you from the fire, but goes into the fire with you. That was good. I can't get an amen? Okay, one more, one more. Here we go. And then, and then, here's the last thing. They came out of the fire, and what? They didn't even smell like smoke. Now, this is Texas. Y'all like barbecue. You like brisket, ribs, chicken. Sausages? Mm-hmm. If that thing came out of the barbecue pit and it didn't smell like smoke, you know, we got a problem. You'd be like, oh, this ain't right. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't barbecue. I don't know what this is. This ain't barbecue. It's plastic. It needs to smell like something. If it's in the fire, then it should come out smelling like something. Yeah? But they came out of the fire. They didn't smell like nothing. Look at the person next to you. Just give them a little. If they smell like smoke, just raise your hand. No, don't do that. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. They came out of the fire and they didn't smell like nothing. You know what that means? The fire didn't touch them. God was in the fire with them. And because he was in the fire with them, it couldn't touch them. They was in it, but it couldn't touch them. They were right there in the midst of it, but it couldn't touch them. You're right there in the midst of it. You're dealing with pressure. You're dealing with something. Just What is your fire? What is your furnace? What is that you're going through? Because the fire is pressure. And here's Jesus. Let me show you. Here's a symbol of Jesus. I found this on the floor. I thought it was so amazing. What is this? What is this? A ball? I'm going to throw it. You ready? 
Here we go. What is it? What is it? Say it again. It's this shoe. Right what do you do with it? This shoe. Why? Okay. What does it help you with? Stress. Say it one more time. Stress. And stress is another word for? And another word for? I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. Pressure. And when you have pressure, what do you do? Squeeze it. Why? Because when you squeeze it, it's taking your mind off of the what? You begin focusing on this. So if this is Jesus and you're like, thank you, Jesus. You're like, thank you, Jesus. You're like, thank you, Jesus. You're like, thank you. Let me see. Let me see your thank you, Jesus. Give me some thank you, Jesus. Right there. That's thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God, I'm going through pressure, but I stopped focusing on my pressure and I began focusing on the Jesus because he wants to get right there in the midst of that fire with you if you trust him. If you're not afraid, because he's looking for the bold and the brave to say, all right, bet. Going to the fire, cool. Pressure, cool. Peer pressure, cool. Drugs and alcohol, cool. Sex, all right, fine. Not that, I'm not saying do it, I'm saying resist it. Going into the fire is the resistance. Resist worshiping the thing that you shouldn't. So let's go back to 1999 as I close. Remember I said to you, when that shooting happened, I thought, man, that was me, could I do that? Could I take that stand? Could I say, I don't care, kill me, bet. The answer is no. In 1999, somebody pulled up, and I went to church every Sunday, every Tuesday, every Friday, choir rehearsal, youth. <laughs> I was in that thing, Sunday nights. Y'all don't even go to church in a year as much as I went to church in a week. But if it would have hit me, I would have been like, no. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's, maybe that's somebody here. Where when the pressure gets real, do you have to make a choice to stand for Christ or to bow down to the pressure? Maybe you're like me where you're like, Sorry, I can't do it. I can't do it, God. And it's okay because Jesus did it. Jesus did it because he knew that we couldn't do it. He, Jesus did it because he knew that a lot of us was right here. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Jesus was bold enough. He was brave enough. He was strong enough. Because just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood in front of that king, Jesus stood in front of those men who had him on trial. Jesus stood in front of Pilate who questioned him. Jesus stood in front of the cross. And he says, I'll do it. So I want to pray. I want to pray for all of you. I want to invite all of you to the altar. Because the reality is we need the boldness and the bravery and the strength of Jesus. Because he's calling you to the furnace. Come on, stand to your feet. He's calling you to the furnace. He's calling you to the fire. And for a lot of us, it's hard to meet that expectation as ourselves. So Jesus says, because I've done it for you, I want to give you my power. I want to give you my strength. And he was afraid. Jesus knew what he had to go through, and fear hit him. Don't think that he was Superman. He was God but he was human. And he struggled with, in those last days, with anxiety, with stress, with fear. He went to God on his knees and said, God, if there's any other way that I can do this, if there's anything else that we could, if, if we can make some other type of arrangement than what I have to go through on that cross, let's do that. Then there was another part of Jesus that rose up and said, nevertheless, 
not my will, but your will be done. That's the even if. Even if. But don't do it for me, God. It's your servant. It's your will. So meet me right here. Everybody, just step out. Come out like a wave. Come together like the Red Sea came back together. Just... Because I know you. Come on, spread out. We're going to spread out right in the front. Spread them out. I know you. I was right where you were. I'm not so old that I don't remember what it's like to be a teenager, what it's like to be a preteen. Come on, keep coming in the back. That was my spot. I used to hide out right there. Nah, y'all, come on up. Come out that aisle. Come on, make some room. More. I won't bite you. I promise. More. Right here. Look at all that space. Ooh, right here. Come on. Come on. If you come, they come. Trust me. If you come, they'll come. If you come, they'll come. If you come, they'll come. When you come, they come. I was right where you were. I was a teenager. I was afraid. I was timid. I was brave and bold, but in other areas. But when it came to this area right here, come on in the back. Keep pressing. Press. I want y'all to press like Drake was up here. I want you to press like was up here. Just come on. Keep coming. In the back. Y'all looking at me. You ain't moving. Your feet got you paralyzed. But I want you to get some liberation, some freedom, some life in your feet. Keep coming. A little more. They're not, they not going to bite you. Press in. Press in. Here you go. All that room on the side. Thank you. That'll work. Yeah, I remember what it was like. But I also know what it's like to really trust God. To trust God in the moments where you feel like you can't. To believe in God in the times where you don't know how to believe in him. To pour out and give everything to God when you don't even know how to do that. I remember what that's like. So I'm going to pray for you. Here's what I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that God empowers you. I'm going to pray that God comes into your heart and removes the, t uh, the timidness and the fear to be more vocal. The fear to press against the pressure. And then I'm going to pray that God gives you peace. Because a lot of us leave church and go home and we can't find peace. Prayer, prayerlessness, peace. Touch and agree with me. Come on, bow your heads. Put your hands on somebody's shoulder next to you. Give them a love tap right on their shoulder. This corporate. Y'all ready? Are you ready? Father, we thank you. We thank you for this moment because you love us with an unwavering, undying, unconditional love. God, we thank you because you saw us before we ever were. You saw us when we were in our mother's womb. And you appointed us to go out into the nations. God, we thank you. Because you said, I desire to bring you into an expected end. I know the plans that I have for you, the plans of good, and to prosper you and to bring you to an expected end. I thank you because you said, I have called you because you are young and because you are strong. God, you said we are more than conquerors. You said we are a royal priesthood. You said we are a chosen generation. You said that we are the sheep of your pasture. And because of that, God, we ask you right now to equip us, every person here, with power. Power to be bold, power to be strong, power to resist the temptations of the enemy. Power to stand against the pressure of this world. You said for us not to be conformed to this world, but be transforming by the renewing of our minds. So, God, we ask you to transform our minds. Give us the mind of Christ that we may know and understand what it means to walk in truth and holiness. 
I pray that you empower them, Father God. And then remove any fear. The fear that makes us not be bold and outspoken for you. I pray that even now by your spirit that you will begin to transform every person here. And then, Father God, I pray that you will give them peace that surpasses all understanding, God. A lot of us, when we walk out of these churches, Father God, we go home and there is chaos. We go back into our neighborhoods and there is chaos. We go to our schools and there is turmoil. We go to social media, we look at the news and there is unsettling fury and mess. So God, surpass our understanding and give them your peace. And now I pray, Father God, for anyone who does not know you, that you will come into their hearts. If there's anyone here under the sound of my voice, you are not saved. You have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You may have fallen into a condition where you felt you walked away from him. Repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come on, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for me, was placed in the tomb for me, and you got up on the third day for me. And right now, I open the door to my heart. And I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Look at the person next to you. Just give them a hug and say, thank you for being here with me. Tell them, thank you for coming to the altar with me. Come on, that's your altar buddy. Come on, you go back to your seats. I'm going to give it back over to uh, Pastor Benny. Come on, give it up for Pastor Benny. Amen. He is calling you to the fire. Praise God, praise God. Okay, I'm going to go over a few announcements. Um, the first one is the ways to give. Um, oh, you can scan a QR code, um, text the number, or you can give online. And our next one will be about our rec Wednesdays. We have it every Wednesday from 6 to 9. Um, and now I'll do the blessing. Come from Numbers, chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. You're not dismissed.
found out like I'm Jesus. Bitches are pledging allegiance. Had to see it to receive it. Lifestyle getting steeper. Even if we got agreements, still be pledging allegiance. Thank you.